Hi, my name is Chad Beecham. And I'm Celia Beecham. We'd like to welcome you to Pelham Road Baptist Church. We've been members here for almost two years, and we have found it to be a loving family, a family that has embraced us. Even with our Methodist upbringing, we feel very much at home, and we hope that you will too. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. God, bless the lost, the confused, the unsure, the bewildered, the puzzled, the baffled, the mystified, and the perplexed. Amen. Good morning. 
Our scripture reading is 1 Corinthians 3, 1 through 11. So brothers and sisters, I could not speak to you as spiritual people, but rather as people of the flesh. Infants, really, in Christ. I fed you with milk, not solid food, for you were not ready for solid food. Even now, I don't think you're ready, for you're still in the flesh. For as long as there is jealousy and quarreling among you, you are in the flesh and behaving according to human inclinations. One of you will say, I'm of Paul. Another will say, I belong to Apollos. Are you not merely human? What then is Apollos? What is Paul? Servants through whom you came to believe as the Lord assigned. I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the growth. So neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything, but only God who gives the growth. The one who plants and the one who waters have a common purpose, and each will receive wages according to their labor. For we are God's servants, working together. You are God's field, God's building, actually. According to the grace of God given to me, like a skilled master builder, I laid a foundation and someone else is building upon it. Each builder must choose with care how to build on it for no one can lay any foundation other than the one that was laid. That foundation is Jesus Christ. Now here's the thing. Paul and Apollos could be seen. God, on the other hand, apparently it's always easier to worship something seen as opposed to something unseen. Moses goes up on the mountain to receive the Ten Commandments. While he's gone, the people forge an idol to worship. See? It's easier to worship something you see, something you hold, even if it is a statue. Later, Samuel taught the people to follow God and follow the God that they could not see. Yet they clamored for a king that they could see. Now, Samuel is hesitant at first, but eventually God convinces Samuel, hey, listen, give the people what they want. And the Lord told Samuel in 1 Samuel 8, Listen to all that the people are saying to you. It's not you they've rejected, Samuel, but they've rejected me as their king. People tend to fall in love with what they can see. Paul and Apollos could be seen. So naturally, the people of Corinth choose sides. Now, Paul recognizes the problem. And he warns the people that any foundation that they build upon other than Jesus Christ is weak and unsteady. Now, in the first chapter of this same book, there's a little foreshadowing that tells us precisely what Paul means by foundation. Jews demand signs. Greeks look for wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified. A stumbling block to Jews, foolishness to Gentiles, but to those of us who have been called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. And so it is written to me, brothers and sisters, when I came to you, I did not come with eloquent speech or human wisdom, for I resolved to know nothing while I was with you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. In case you're wondering what the foundation is, it's Christ crucified. Jesus is the foundation. He is not decoration. Now, most of my ministry has been in the 21st century. And one of the major influencers in the 21st century has been church marketing. We were told as pastors that churches needed some sort of signature. Maybe it would be an event but something you were known for, something you did better than the neighbors across the street or down the street. I mean, our neighbors 
here in Greenville at Brushy Creek Baptist Church were known for their drive-through nativity for years. Sam was a part, uh, the associate pastor here, was a part of the good work at Berea First Baptist, and they were known for their living Christmas tree. Some churches make their signature a powerful pulpit with a fiery preacher. Other churches, well, they make their signature their mission work. All of this is a noble attempt to have a well-defined marketing signature a way of separating yourself from all the other churches. But there's a thin line between a signature and a foundation. You do something long enough, say something loud enough, the people begin to confuse the event with the foundation. You quote Paul long enough, some confuse him with the foundation. You hold the Bible in your hand and place it on the altar table and always talk about its power. Don't be surprised when people make the Bible the foundation instead of Jesus. But instead of thinking about Corinth or Brushy Creek, let's consider ourselves here at Pelham Road. We take a lot of pride in our welcome, not simply that moment in church when we welcome each other, but the spirit of welcome that hangs over us from the parking lot to the altar. We take a lot of pride in this. At times, it feels like we speak of our fellowship and our welcome like they're the foundation. I mean, no doubt it's valuable. It's nice to have. But our welcome that's a fireplace. That's a kitchen table. That's a front porch. It's not the foundation. It's tempting to make the foundation something we can see, something we can do, something we can hear. Paul, a preacher, a welcome. When we Make that the foundation. Whatever we construct, it's not a church. So Paul's first warning for the church of any age is it's really not about you. It's about the foundation, and the foundation must be Jesus. So if we keep here in our work, Jesus has the foundation. The next challenge that any church has is what do you build on the foundation? For no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid, which is Jesus Christ. If anyone builds on this foundation using gold, silver, costly stone, wood, hay, or straw, their work will be shown for what it is because the day will be brought into light. It will be revealed with fire, and the fire will test the quality of each person's work. St. Paul's second fear was that even though that it was the right foundation, the church could use the wrong superstructure to build on top. Now don't think of fire here as punishment or eternal fire. Here, fire is just a, a way of testing. Are we building something like straw? Are we, are we using something like straw to build on that has a short lifespan <laughs> when it comes up against fire? Or are we building with silver or some precious metal that even melted by fire retains its value? The traditional values, love, compassion, contentment, righteousness, they're really not trendy, are they? But they do last. Yet many a church has built on the right foundation 
but they have built upon it with trendy values. Trendy values that make the church relevant, but not necessarily faithful. Now we can build with the imperishable. Paul once made a list, faith, hope, and love. We can build with the imperishable. That's what we can construct on top of Jesus is faith, hope, and love in these imperishables. And that's a lot of work. Or we can build with the perishable. We can have the superstructure be these perishable things like straw and wood. In the modern church, that might be a, an MBA business model for the church. Or TED Talks on Sunday mornings. You see, the imperishable is centered on faith. The other is centered on the best practices of today. A church sitting on any corner in any place is a witness. You are my witnesses, declares the Lord in Isaiah 43. We are supposed to tell the truth about living a life anchored in Christ. The most imperishable item we can build upon is the truth. The foundation is laid as Jesus. The superstructure contains truth. Truth as we have witnessed it. What we say, what we support, and what we do bears witness about the Christ-centered life. I mean, a church that fights, they're bearing witness. A church that argues is bearing witness. A church that forgives is bearing witness. A church that serves the homeless is bearing witness. We need to tell the truth about what it is like to walk the way of Christ as a congregation. It's rewarding, but it's not easy. Forgiving, well, that's important, but it's really hard. Loving others is easy when you're young. It gets a little harder as you get older. Loving God with all your heart, all your soul, it really means we just don't get to do what we please. This year, we're going to celebrate 50 years of ministry at Pelham Road. Not this October, but next October, we celebrate that. 50 years of ministry in Jesus' name. As we continue our pilgrimage, let's be careful not to worship our fellowship or to think too highly of our welcome. This is not the foundation. It is the overflow from loving Christ. And further, let's build on the principles that matter. Not on a fad, but on eternal things. On eternal things like faith, hope, love, and the truth.
join me in the benediction. For you who feel like you are never enough, for those doubters, questioners, for those who feel unlovable, lonely, or alone, for each of us who are messy, imperfect humans, step into the refreshing river of love. Let God's mercy and grace wash over you, transforming your fear, extinguishing your guilt, knowing, believing the best news ever. You, you beloveds, are extravagantly loved by the one whose love never ends. Thanks be to God. Go in love. Amen.